breached a crisis in our history. Nine months since the fall of Poland, Britain stands alone against the German military machine. One by one, our allies fell. Norway, Denmark, then in May, Holland's resistance was crushed in less than a week. We hoped to hold them back in Belgium, but it was not to be. The Germans struck at the hinge of the French line and created a bulge. The bulge became a gap. Belgium fell. We snatched back 340,000 from the beaches of Dunkirk, but their equipment lies abandoned. And now France has fallen too. Poor blind France, a pawn of the ruthless conqueror. We'll leave you with our new Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, who I'm sure speaks the words in every British heart. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on beaches, landing grounds, in fields, in streets, and on the hills. We shall never surrender. Did they think they could win? It's true that many people who knew the real situation were worried about Britain's chances of surviving a German attack. But in all public information, like the newsreel words used in the bulletin, the aim was to keep up people's hopes. So did the Germans invade Britain? They tried throughout the summer of 1940 in what became known as the Battle of Britain. A battle between the Royal Air Force and the German Luftwaffe for control of the air. If the German invasion of Britain was to succeed, then they needed to establish air superiority over the Channel and the south of England. What was it like to fight like that? The museum has a selection of interviews with British and German pilots. Which would you prefer? British. I was more afraid on the ground while waiting to take off. The thing that really frightened me was waiting for that tannoy either to say scramble or the telephone to go. If the tannoy came on, not saying anything, I could be sick before we'd had time to talk. They were long hours, boring hours, interspersed with moments of tremendous exhilaration. Blue section out there. Great nightmare I have is being very tired. We were on readiness from 3.30 in the morning until 10.30 at night. On a bad day, we'd do five or six sorties against the enemy. We never had enough pilots. We had pilots, but they weren't trained. You'd be up there in your tight little office, listening like a hawk and watching like and then as you turn, uh, when you take your decision, then you're committed, everybody is. And then the shooting starts, and then, whoa, it's all over the sky. Oh. If you did keep your finger on the button, your ammunition would expend itself in 14 seconds. You've got about six, two second bursts. And so I didn't start firing till it was very close. Air yeah, fighting is impersonal because you're not thinking of people. You really aren't thinking when you see something in your sights. That really isn't one man or five men if it's a bomber or whatever it is. It's a target. One saw a lot of one's friends being burnt. Rather appallingly, occasionally you heard them being burnt because their radio was left on uh, when they started being burnt. You could hear them screaming. People often say, well, what did you think? Uh, all I thought was hate. I thought, who are these bastards who are flying in our sky, bombing our country with black crosses and swastikas all over their cursed aeroplanes? Any claims, Johnny? Uh, a 109 destroyed, but yes. Oh, good show. One forgets about the Battle of Britain. It might have been frightening, like before race is frightening, but it was uh, very exciting. He can't really have enjoyed it. Many talk of the exhilaration of battle. That's especially true in the air, where engagements are short, skillful, almost clinical. But as ever, there was a high price to pay. Over 3,000 British and German airmen died. 
Many more were permanently injured. But Hitler had suffered his first major setback. June 1941. Britain is undefeated.